So you've just gotten your passport stamped and the first thing you're thinking about is woohoo! Let's go to Canada! I made a number of mistakes when booking my first flight out of my nation and I wish someone had told me things that you should avoid when you're going to a place like Canada and booking a ticket for your first time. So the first mistake I made was that I booked using an agent. Do not do that. There are a lot of things that happen, especially right now, post-pandemic. There's a lot of things that could change in between the time when you book your ticket and the time when you're going to be flying. Small things that may, you may need changes for, you will find it very difficult to communicate with them. I wanted to change my flight from the initial flight that I had to a different one. Here's what happened. When I called KLM, they told me that, hey, yes, we confirm that you have a flight with us. However, because you booked through an agent, we cannot talk to you. Go back to that agent. When I tried to call my agent, they weren't responding. I would send them a message on email. They would give me a phone number to call, a phone number that was not going through. Now, you can imagine you spent a huge amount of money to go out of your country and that person is not available to receive your call. It was so stressful. Let's discuss the second mistake that was there. I booked a flight that was going through two European countries. Now, <laughs> I'd never flown before, so I didn't know there was something called a Shenzhen visa. You cannot be able to travel through two European countries, even if you're coming to Canada and you have a visa that allows you to gain entry into Canada, you'll not be allowed to fly through two European countries without a Shenzhen visa. A Shenzhen visa takes at the very least two weeks to book and you may not even get it. The flight that I had booked, it was cheap because it was flying through two cities, through Paris and through Amsterdam. Once I arrived at the airport, I was not able to get into that flight. They had to change my flight at the airport. The next mistake I made was trying to optimize my price, trying to get the very lowest price. Now this is a good idea if especially you're planning way ahead of time. But for most of us, especially when you receive our confirmation of permanent residence, you're excited about going and probably have a very short deadline, I would advise you to not try to look for the cheapest flight because by doing that, you most likely are going to find yourself in a desperate trap. So let me give an example of what happened. Skyscanner was what we were using and we would check uh, what's the cheapest flight available and the prices would keep on fluctuating. We were waiting for the perfect timing to come and when we found the very most perfect flight, that's when we actually like proceeded to book it. Now we became desperate. We want this low price with this agent that has promised a very low price. And you get a low price, but then when you start trying to refresh, it tells you, oh, we, the price has bumped up by a bit, so we can't offer you that flight at that price. You say, okay, yeah, let me get the higher price. That whole scenario of being desperate makes you make bad decisions. Based on the, the one flight I did, so take it for what it's worth, I'm not an expert here, but the advice I would give is, like find what the average price of tickets are and book a ticket that works for you. The other reason why you probably need to be careful about like not getting desperate is that there are some things that they don't tell you. For instance, if you're going to be transiting through Paris, you need to have enough time of a layover. Paris is a really, really huge airport. And especially if you're changing terminals from one terminal to another, it may take quite a bit of time to get there. Then you'll find that there's a very long queue once you get to that ne next terminal. Especially if you'll have to go through immigration to go to the next terminal, you need to make sure that your layover is long. Our first flight that got canceled had a layover of like one hour. And a few friends who I told about this later were saying, talk to your um, the flight attendant and tell them that you have a very short connection. You may miss your flight, so they could allow you to leave first so that you could be able to go and make your connection and run. Um, you may have to make a dash for it. Third thing is do not detach your stroller. If, you're, if your stroller has multiple things within it, do not detach it. And if you do detach it, make sure that they are all strapped together because you'll have a tag on that stroller that has sort of like some code that tells here's the destination, here's where this stroller is going. If the detached piece is not part of the thing that has the tag, it will get lost. Find a way of making sure that they are all attached together. They are not just two pieces individually because the person carrying them will not really care. It will get lost in transit. If you're able to get the stroller into the flight with you, into the plane with you, request it. Give it to the, the, the flight attendant. Then you'll be able to get it, get out with it when you get to your connection and connect with it to the next flight. The other mistake that I made is that you, if you have a child with you and you're going with them, then they are going to be on your lap. Make sure you order food for them. We were on an Air France flight 
and the only thing they could give us was sort of like some purees. It wasn't a full meal for our baby, so we had to figure out how we, had, we were going to feed our baby, call ahead of time and find out, do you actually need to book a meal for your child who is going to be on your lap? Because it's not obvious that they're going to give you a meal. Do not waste time before adding your details with the airline. Especially these days, there's a lot of information that you need pro to provide if you're traveling, especially if it's your first time and you don't know what's required. Make sure that once you book your flight, get in that portal and fill in all the information they need. You may actually discover that there's a piece of information that is required that needs you to do something. For instance, you need to go and print out some stuff and you don't have a printer at your home. If you're waiting until the last minute, it is going to be so stressful to try and get all of those printouts together and in the right place. For us, we made huge mistakes when booking our Airbnb that made our lives more difficult than they should have been. So watch this video next that explains to you how to choose a good Airbnb when landing in Canada for your first time.